Good morning, everybody. It's another What's Up Wednesday with Corinne from The Sewing Works. And today I'm excited to talk to you about some techniques with denim, show you a new stitch maybe you haven't used, which pretty much every Bernina has. At least anyone in the last 50 years probably has this stitch. And then I also wanna give you some other ideas on projects you can do with denim. So I'm really excited to show you some techniques today and I would also really love it if I could get some feedback from you guys as to what kind of videos you wanna see. If you wanna see more mending videos, some garment videos, maybe some costume ideas for kids or for adults, let me know what you're interested in so I can give you the content you wanna see. Good morning. Okay, so first off, I want to talk to you about mending jeans. This is something many of you do. Some of you choose not to do. I try not to do it, but there are times when you just got to buckle down and get, get something fixed. So, um, especially for work, work pants that you're just going to abuse time and time again, who cares if you put some patch on it to make it work again for another couple months, save yourself some money. That's why you have this fabulous, fabulous sewing machine. So let me grab some pants that I have that I got to mend. Okay, no embarrassment here. Don't shame me. These are my pants, which I have ripped right here, trying to get on my horse. So that's a common thing for me here in the crotch area. When I lift my leg, sometimes I tear that out. <laughs> Good morning. My husband tends to tear his right here by these back pockets. I don't know if he's trying to stick his big fat wallet in there and pulling too hard on the top but I have to mend this a lot for him although I try not to okay so first thing I like to do is keep in my stash some extra denim I don't care really what color it is and I usually just once I have a pair of jeans that I've decided okay it's had it I'm not fixing it I just keep it or whack some pieces off of it to give me this extra denim to patch with so I like to put heat and bond on these pieces of denim so that I can create some internal patches that you're not going to even hardly see from the outside. It's just to keep those little peekaboos from happening over the men job. So I'm going to slide this inside of my jeans where the hole is. Now there's kind of two methods for if you want to adhere this right away when you slide this in or if you want to wait and stitch it and then adhere it. The reason why you may want to wait is I probably don't need a patch this big. So after I've done the stitching that I'm gonna do to cover the hole, I can cut a lot of this away. It's gonna be more difficult to cut it away if I have to first peel it up and then cut it away. So for today's demo, I'm gonna wait and do my adhering step with my iron after we've done the mending. So. I'm going to turn you around and show you about the darning stitch. Okay, where's the button? There it is. Okay, so here is my little Bernina Activia 230. This happens to be one of the machines that we rent if you need a sewing machine while you come to class. And I am looking for this stitch number 15. So it's probably in your utility stitches folder that you'll find this stitch and it looks like a whole bunch of straight stitches right next to each other. And it's really cool when you figure out how to use it, but sometimes it's kind of confusing how to make it work. So I've got the tray table off so that I can slide my jeans onto my machine bed. And I've got this patch inside as well so get past the pocket this is good because I've been putting off fixing these pants so I'm glad I'm doing this today and I find that with women's uh, denim these days they're making it thinner and thinner because they want to make them stretchy and make them hug your curves nice, but they tend to rip a little easier. Okay, so I've kind of worked that patch under the denim here, 
and I'm trying to kind of hold it flat. Do you notice, let me see if I can zoom you in just a hair. Might have to ang angle you a little better. Okay, so you see these little fibers, these loose fibers here? That is the one, the grains of fabric going this way are still there. The grains of fabric going this way are torn. So I'm going to replace the grains going this way with that darning stitch. So I actually would rather stitch this like this. So that I'm gonna kinda create that weave effect again with the darning stitch. Now, it will go a lot faster if I do it that way because you can see my tear is very long this way, very narrow that way. So take your pick. Some of you just want to get it done. I'm going to show you another technique, especially since these are just work pants for me, um, that I typically use, but I also want to show you the darning stitch. So pay close attention here. You see how the needle is in the leftmost position when I begin this stitch. So I'm going to make sure I'm back all the way at the beginning. And I'm going to start sewing. And the magic of the darning stitch is once you get as far forward as you want to go, you're going to hit the reverse button one time. Oops, hang on. Might have to start that over. It was still remembering my darning stitch I just practiced before I came on here. Let me hit clear. Okay. Back to the beginning with 15. Sewing a straight stitch down as far as I want to go. Then hit reverse one time, which tells it how far to travel. Oh, my finger is right in the way. So now it's going to move one. I, you may not have watched, seen it, but it moved one needle position over. It's going to go back to the top. Move one needle position over, back to the bottom, and over, and over, and over, and over. until it reaches that farthest right position. And then it stops on its own and it resets back to the start. So if I was gonna do this, the best mending way would be to work my way down this slit, going over, over, over. I hope you can see that. Oh yeah, you can see it. Okay, so that's how the darning stitch works. Pretty cool, but you gotta remember to hit reverse when you're ready to turn around. Now my other favorite stitch to use when I am mending is the stitch I like to call the honeycomb, which is this number 22 right here. I often use this, especially when I'm mending something more utilitarian, like a dog kennel cover or a horse blanket or something that has fluff inside of it and maybe multiple layers. And I want to get all that stuff stuck back together wherever I have my holes. So this stitch has a wide swing. I'm going to see if I can turn my pants again. I probably should have cut that, but we'll be okay. So that I can come down this tear and sew it right up. I just want to feel under here, make sure my patch is in a good position. Ooh. Where is my patch? Oh. Technical difficulties, hang on. <laughs> okay we'll go number 22 and we're gonna set the presser foot down and I, sh I wish I was on another machine because I would show you another cool technique but I'll talk to you talk you talk you through it so here I go honeycomb stitch down the tear putting lots of stitches to grab all those loose fibers and anchor them down, coming all the way in. Now, if you are on one of the machines 
that is a 2017 or newer, probably 2015 or newer if you've got a 7 Series, um, you have something in your I menu where if you open the I menu and look at the very bottom bar, there is a picture of your reverse button, this little U with the arrow. That's continuous reverse. So you don't have to hold this button down. You just activate, excuse me, kicked you guys, activate continuous reserve, reverse. And then you got both hands to go back up this project. You don't have to turn it. Because as you can see, not very easy to turn when it's on this free arm. The other good thing about where I typically rip my pants right here, it's not very easy to see when I'm done mending it. It's kind of tucked in under my bum. Okay, let's get this off of here. And I'll show you what we got. Zoom you out as much as I can. So see here, I've got this big, big old patch and I don't need all that. So I will take my scissors and cut with rounding the corners and I just need like a quarter of an inch outside that. Then I'm going to go ahead and activate that glue with my iron, hot iron. And look at this. You can't even see it. It's hiding in there. Ooh, I got some, got a piece of tape or something on this leg. Oh, now you can see my patch on the other side. But, for the most part, they're ready for another, another couple days of fence work or something. All right, now let's show you some other stuff to get you inspired. So, I brought in, again, no, no harsh judgment, please, my very first quilt. So... Here's some ideas that you can do with your denim scraps. Or if you want, don't want to mend those jeans, save them and put them in a quilt. So, there we go. This is the very first quilt I made. It is my wedding quilt. I had my guests that came to my wedding sign my little farm animals that I cut out. And then I applique them on. I didn't realize applique was going to be... A tricky thing when I did this process. I also used a cardboard template to cut out all my squares. Haha, <laughs> didn't know what a rotary cutter was yet. So as you can see, not perfect, but I also did all of the quilting on this myself too. Very first quilt. Now notice I used the, the denim scraps to also make the binding. So this is like four, sometimes eight layers of denim that I had to sew through to make my denim binding and I pretty well destroyed my machine. So that was when I got introduced to the world of Bernina and I discovered how much more powerful they are for some of these projects that I like to do with denim, with canvas, with those horse blankets, all that fun stuff that I tend to put my machine up to. Oh, thank you guys. You guys are being so nice. Look at these little baby faces. Oh, it's kind of wrinkled. You can't see us very well. We were just so young then. And another great idea for denim is using it as applique. So like I said, save those jeans that you don't want to mend and repurpose them. You can make them into bags. I've made an apron. Oh, I should have brought my apron over here. Um, it's great material that lasts and lasts and lasts. So upcycled denim projects are very cool, very trendy, and I'm sure you can find tons of them on the internet. So thank you for joining me again today. Let me know what kind of videos you might want me to put out there in the future as far as techniques or um, feet, different, different fabrics, whatever you want to see. Please let me know. I'd be happy to give you some videos and some content on it. So thank you for now. Stop by the store and say hi if you get a chance. Have a great Wednesday. Bye.